Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be making a start, at the very least, on my review of all the Discworlds, a stage by Terry Pratchett, uh, adapted by Stephen Briggs. So these are basically three plays uh, set in the Discworld based on Terry Pratchett's books. And um, I will read you the blurb in a second, we'll go through and check out my tabs. What I will say is that I enjoyed reading this because even though I've read all of the Discworld books, it kind of allowed me to feel as though I was experiencing these stories for the first time, you know? I would love to go and see some of these plays performed too. Uh, I'm not sure how much, you know, my the things I've tabbed out are actually kind of going to be relevant to storylines, because I think a lot of them were just puns that I enjoyed, or little details that I hadn't noticed the first time round. But we'll go in and get started. Dane reads. So we have the following three plays. Feet of Clay. Someone is killing Lord Vetinari, patrician of Ankh-Morpork. No one knows who, no one knows why, and worst of all, no one knows how, he just gets weaker and weaker. But it's not just Vetinari. Across the city, people are being murdered, but there's no trace of anything alive having been at the crime scene. Commander Vimes, head of the City Watch, is a man who hates clues. He and his team must question everyone, the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker. In a city teeming with vampires, werewolves, dwarfs with attitude and golems, Vimes must solve the crimes and save the patrician. And we have the Rinse Cycle. As a punishment, failed wizard Rincewind is given the task of guiding and safeguarding the disc's first tourist, Two Flower, with his magical luggage on legs. As they travel the city and beyond, they meet the world's oldest hero, Cohen the Barbarian. With him, and with Bethan, a qualified sacrificial victim, they encounter druids, trolls, adventurers, a hairdresser, and a power-crazed wizard. Oh, and death. But not fatally. Did we mention that Rincewind also has to save the world from destruction by a huge red star that will collide with the Discord at Hogswatch? The Rinse Cycle is mostly based on the Light Fantastic, with bits of the colour of magic and sorcery added for good measure. And then Unseen Academicals. Two households both alike in dignity in Fairank Moorport where we lay our scene. Football divides the city. Each area has its own team, and rivalry means supporters never mix, until a Dimwell fan falls for a Dolly Sisters goal. And now an ancient bequest means the Wizards of Unseen University must win a football match without using magic. Luckily, they're coached by the mysterious Mr. Nut, and no one knows anything about Mr. Nut, not even Mr. Nut, which worries him too. As the match approaches, four lives are entangled and changed forever, because the thing about football, the important thing about football, is that it's not just about football. So, um, we have a word on pronunciation here, um, so uh, we've got Ankhmore Pork, Veterinary, Rincewind, Octavo, uh, Alkali, and Angwa. It says applications for professional performance should be made before rehearsal to Colin Smythe Limited at Gerard's Cross, which is just round the corner from me. Anyway, into Feet of Clay, which happens to be my, one of my favourite Discworld books. It's the first one that I've read, anyway. And so here's Kara, and a uh, little reference to the, 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 the river Ank and how polluted it is. There's a 30-foot drop into the river outside the window. There won't be any footprints. I mean, even on a river as thick as the Ank, any footprints would be bound to have oozed back by now. And uh, Commander Vimes is going to um, to see the Guild of, uh, what is it, the Guild of Chivalry? The College of Heralds. Um, and because uh, he wants to get a coat, well he doesn't want to, but he has to get a coat of arms made against his better judgement. Um, and we get, ye gods, what's that? Those are the heraldic beasts for the coats of arms. Commander Vimes, I just thought you made them up. What, you paint them from life then? Of course, make them up indeed. Mind you, we could do with a female hippo. I mean, it's not natural for Roderick and Keith. I ain't passing judgement, it's just not right, that's all I'm saying. And uh, we get a reference to Vimes' views on vampires. Not really alive, but not dead enough. And Vimes learns he can't have a coat of arms. That is so. Because my ancestor killed a... He was the king. Oh yes, and he was fond of children. Very fond of children. And in the dungeons he had machines for... And we're learning about some of the um, the puns that the, the guild uses in their coats of arms. So uh, the one for the baker is... Uh, Quod subigo farinam. Uh, because I need the dough. And we get the quote. People talk about the true king of Ankh-Morpork, but the true king is the one who gets crowned. Very true. And then lights out, moving on to scene three. And Angwa talks about the drawbacks of being a werewolf. Uh, fleas, the constant nagging feeling that you should be wearing three bras at once. You learn to keep it under control. Okay, there is the occasional chicken, but I always go round next day to shove some money under the door. She says, it's very hard being a vegetarian who has to pick bits of meat out of their teeth in the morning. It's easy to be a vegetarian by day. It's stopping yourself from becoming a humanitarian at night that takes the effort. And so, uh, yeah, Vime shows up to see the patrician to try and figure out who's been, who's been poisoning him. him. Uh, so he goes, his lordship's just a bit... I reckon he's been poisoned, Fred, and that's the truth of it. Do you want me to get a doctor? Are you mad? We want him to live. 
but someone ought to look at him. Send a runner up to the stables on King's Down to fetch Donut Jimmy. Donut? He doesn't know anything about doctoring. He dopes racehorses, and he goes on to become um, the patrician's doctor, which comes brings all kinds of fun. Um, there is a reference at some point to him being in a stable condition, but it's kind of not clear whether that's meant to be a joke or not. I assume so, but it's, it's glossed over. Usually in the Discworld, if somebody made a pun like that, another character would call them out on it and be like, that's terrible. And so there's a little bit here which is funny because I was talking to my partner about this, uh, Shay, for those of you who follow me and who know who Shay is. But um, I was explaining how like sometimes before say like a World Cup football match, um, like the England manager will say to the team, you're not allowed to have sex tonight. Um, and we kind of get a little reference to that. Um, I'm just going to do the dialogue here. So uh, the chair of indefinite studies goes, salad? I don't eat salads. They give me the wind. How can a man live without meat? This is barbaric. And Ridcully, the chief wizard, he says, My plate will be as barren as yours, gentlemen. Mr. Nutt is training us, and I'm allowing Mr. Nutt the driver's seat. Nor is there to be any smoking this evening. Also, his instruction here, there is to be no sexual congress. That means talking about it, doesn't it? No, that's oral sex. No, that's listening to it. Veterinari says, It does look as if football is very much like diplomacy. Short periods of fighting followed by long periods of negotiation. Yep, fair. And this is really sweet between Trev and Juliet. Trev says, I'll find something to do. I'll go wherever you go. Juliet says, you ought to stay here and play football. You know what some people said when we were drinking? They said Dave Likely was your father. Well, yes, that's true. Yes, but they used to say you were his son. And so Lady Margolotta asks not the orc. He says, uh, she says, um, find the orcs that still live in Far Uberwald and bring them back out of the dark. They're not like you. They are a sorry bunch. Many bad things were done under the evil empire. The best we can do now is undo them. Will you assist in this endeavor? In every way that I can. I would like you to teach them civilised behaviour. Yes, of course, I think that would be quite possible. And who would you send to teach the humans? Uh, and I like the fact it said, originally they're talking about how the orcs were descended, uh, like they were created by the Dark Lord out of goblins. Uh, but it turns out, no, if they'd made them out of goblins, they wouldn't have been mean enough. So they were obviously made out of humans, uh, which I thought was fun. So yes, uh, all the disc was a stage by Terry Pratchett, three Pratchett plays adapted by Stephen Briggs. Wonderful read. As I say, for me, it was like rediscovering these stories and experiencing them for the first time. I would love, love, love to go and see some of these in the theatre. Um, maybe I should look that up. Um, we will see. But yes, I gave All the Discords a stage by Terry Pratchett with a bit of Stephen Briggs, I guess. A 4.5 out of 5. So there we have it, that's what I made of all the discords of stage. As always, don't forget to let me know what you thought of this book. If you read it, hit that like button. If you've enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button for more. And I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.